California. The, uh, the federal appeals court has agreed with a California law that allows them to collect your DNA. All you have to be is arrested. doesn't matter. You don't have to be charged. You don't have to be convicted. You don't have to be found guilty. All you have to be is a human being capable of carrying that little magical thing called DNA. And they're taking it, whether you like it or not. Why, why does that matter? So many people say, what do I care if they have my DNA? Well, you know, no one realized the depths that we could put, that the nefarious could put your data to. Now you're beginning to see just the inkling of the, the magnitude of the fruit that's going to be born from that evil. Wait until they've got your DNA in a database. And there's no escaping their view between cameras and monitoring your communications and knowing your DNA. And the next time that <clears throat> someone pounds on your door, law enforcement, open up. What can I do for you? Where were you yesterday afternoon? Uh, I went shopping, I went to work, I came home. We're taking you into the custody for investigation for murder. Based on what? Well, they found a plastic wrapper that fell out of your pocket. And it had your DNA on it. And it was found within 10 feet of the body. Have a nice day. We'll see you in about 20. Years, that is. Say it ain't so. You're a fool and an idiot. We need a sample of your DNA. Or you cannot work here, buy here, shop here sell here. If you believe that living in some kind of a 1984 dystopian uh, world is preferential to the idea that you are, you know, independent, I don't know uh, what, 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 why you're listening to this program. <laughs> I mean, I got to ask the obvious question. If you don't think that there's something desperately wrong with this, I guess I'm confused. Sam Adams said to us, for true patriots to be silent, is dangerous. He also said to us, if you love wealth better than your liberty, if you love the, tra the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, then go from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or your arms. Crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chains set lightly upon you and may posterity forget that you are our countrymen. We live in a banana republic. Anyone who chooses to try to deny that at this point is either intellectually dishonest or a part of the beneficiary group of that republic. You've allowed your corruption to skew your viewpoint to the point where you are willing to justify it because you're getting something from it. We have a president who doesn't follow the law. We have a federal court system which is only too happy to acquiesce 
when their job is to protect us from the executive and legislative in tyranny. We have a legislative who, for all intents and purposes, sides with everything that the executive is willing to do, and then not only that, but institutes their own tyranny upon us. We have micro dictators vying against each other to who can hurt us the worst. We have state representatives who don't honor their oath and are willing to sacrifice their own constituents. When Republicans say that you cannot pass a law in Tennessee that enables your Second Amendment rights to be reaffirmed and guaranteed and protected by that state, they have no justification for existence as a member of a body of governance. They should be removed from their position, labeled, ejected, as dishonorably discharged. Well, it violates the Supremacy Clause. If you truly are in governance and you don't understand the difference between the focus of the Supremacy Clause and its intentional, its intentional separation from tyranny, you've got no, you don't have to be a constitutional scholar to understand that, folks. It says right in there that it must be pursuant to. It has to be pursuant to the Constitution in order for the Supremacy Clause to have any effect. You cannot tell me that a violation of your Second Amendment rights or your First Amendment rights is pursuant to the supremacy is pursuant to the Constitution, and therefore the supremacy clause can't be supreme over anything. But in Tennessee, traitors reign. Traitors from the Republican Party. Traitors from the Democrat Party. Traitors from the party of treason. In the White House, an illegal man an alien, a usurper, a liar, a thief, a known proven liar occupies the seat of power. Judges who should be separating themselves from this and decrying his activities and actions say, hands off, we don't know, that's between you guys, you in the house, you and the Senate, you guys settle it. We don't want a part of that. That means that they have completely and utterly abdicated their responsibility to us to protect us from government. Your police, your police, oh, holy smokes. I mean, it's now clearly, without a doubt, us versus them. No one should be willing to deny that at this point. My question to you is this. Who's on our side? Who's on your side? Who's on the side of the regular Joe? Who's on the side of the nine to five guy? Who's on the side of the welder, the baker, the butler? Who's on the side of those of us who just struggle every day to feed our kids and make sure that they have a good education? Who's on the side of us who are struggling to make sure that the lights are on and the heat simultaneously work? Who's on the side of us? None. No one. No one in government. No one in corporations. No one in industry. No one, period. We are alone. We are abandoned. We have been forsaken by that which is intended to protect and defend us. And that, ladies and gentlemen, tells you this is a banana republic. The media covers it up or assists in its criminal behavior. This is a banana republic. 
You may as well be living in Libya. You may as well be living in Uganda. You may as well be living in Vietnam or Laos. You may, be, you may as well be living in China or Russia. You think because they hold the flag in the air that somehow or other that makes it all better. It makes it all right. It's all going to be fixed at some point in time. I'm not quite sure who's going to ride in and save us, but the republic will turn around and the bananas will go away and the flowers will once again bloom and the freedom will shine. You're fooling yourself. There is no salvation on your horizon unless you make it so. And it's going to be painful and it's going to be ugly. And it's going to cost you treasure and blood. All of this surveillance, I'm asking you to give me one justification. I've put this question out, I've put this as an open challenge out for well over a year now. You give me one justification. One thing, all I want is one, just one thing that all of this surveillance and massive buildup of information about you, you give me one example of how it will benefit you. One. My email box has never received a response. And it never will. Because none of this benefits you. Not the taking of your DNA, not the monitoring of your purchases, not the, av the, av av the ability for them to monitor what you're saying and talking about, not the ability of the NSA. This came out the other day that the NSA is monitoring the telephone calls of entire countries. Every phone call made. Every single phone call made. From the call to your neighbor next door to borrow sugar, to the call to your bank, to the call from banker to banker, arranging a multi-zillion dollar transfer, all of it's being recorded. Entire nations. And America went, oh, ho oh, hum. If they're doing it there, and you don't believe they're doing it here, you're a damn fool. Well, there are laws prohibiting that kind of act. <laughs> really? You believe that, huh? What are they doing with that information? Why do, we, why do they need it? How is it going to benefit you? Well, they're doing it because they have to keep us safe from those terrorists. What terrorists? What terrorists? You mean the ones they tell us about from 9-11? Are you so sure that, I don't know, 19 third world Darn near Neanderthals were able to carry out a plot of that size, dimension, and scope? Really? Have you asked the questions, the hard ones? Have you seen the answers? Well, we could have these shootings and, you know, we gotta make sure that these kids aren't getting a gun and going to a school. Find me one. Find me one where the facts add up. Not Aurora, not Sandy Hook. Find me one where the facts add up. Find me one where there's not a major, major hole or series of holes big enough to drive a tractor trailer through in the explanations we've received. Why are the records all sealed on Sandy Hook? Why are the parents all locked down? Why has the building been destroyed? Where is all of the evidence? We're keeping it private because we want to protect the privacy of the parents. Okay, go back to sleep, please. Just, I, I, I can't even solve the problem if, and, and help you evaluate it if you refuse to accept. You see, this is worse than a banana republic. This is a banana republic not with some 
third world thug who's so, you know, his entire capability is limited to how to pull a trigger. This is a, this is a much more dangerous criminal. This is a criminal that not only knows how to pull the trigger and do it well, but they also have the technological skill to know everything about you, everything you do, everywhere you go, everyone you communicate with, every, 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 every. And that makes them orders of magnitude more dangerous. Well, Rand Paul, he's going to fix it when he gets in in 2016. Yeah, dream on. We haven't even made it to 2014 yet. You think we're actually going to make 2016? <clears throat> Look at the economic bubble surrounding you. They're planning their getaway. They're planning their safe haven. They're planning your demise, or frankly, just couldn't care less what happens to you as long as they get theirs. If you think these people in authority and power have not put aside a contingency plan for their own protection and that of their families, you are a greater fool than you could possibly ever imagine. Everyone knows. Everyone is aware. Everyone in a position of authority and power is knowledgeable about what's happening. The simple truth is they just don't care. You're of no consequence. So what you need to do as a human being, as a individual who has rights and privileges that have been dictated to you and given to you and planted within you by your creator is to stop following the mandate laid down by tyrants, which will universally end up with your demise. When the government is outlaws, there's no reason why we should not become outlaws, none whatsoever. That's not even me saying that. I mean, We've had political entities come out the other day and say that. If the government is going to act in an outlawish, an out, outlawry and a, and a, and a, uh, a fashion of lawlessness, then why should the people follow the law? Banana republics get away with terrible, terrible um, ab abuses of their people, all in an effort to subjugate unrest. April 15th is com or April 16th is coming where they're going to do that American Spring. If millions of Americans show up there in Washington, D.C., and I don't know whether they will or not, you watch and see how that works out. You watch and see whether or not those people, I mean, you already see it. Those people who do speak out, myself included. You know, I'm not talking about the rushes of the world who just express outrage, but really don't call it what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm forever distressed. You know, because I cannot see a people willing to step up and do their own and, and defend themselves in a way in which is necessary. I understand the fear. I do. But at some point in time, it's going to come down to a, 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 a position where you're going to say, I got nothing left to lose.
You know why? And it's happened many times before. I know no one wants to actually go back into history and say it's possible. I know, I get it, I see it. But if you will not fight for the right when you can easily win without bloodshed, we've ignored that. If you will not fight when your victory will be sure and not too costly, walk way past that, you may come to the moment when you will have to fight with all the odds against you and only a precarious chance of survival. We're about to experience that. There may even be a worst case. You may have to fight when there is no hope of victory because it is better to perish than to live as slaves. Let's hope we don't have to go there. That was Winston Churchill. Well, that was a long time ago. Do you think mankind has really changed that much? <laughs> You're kidding me, right? No, a long time ago was when the Egyptians were, and, and the Greeks and the Romans, they were taking over entire nations back then. That was a long time ago. Yeah, this is really not a long time ago. In fact, in the <clears throat> history of mankind, it's merely a blink of the eye. Well, we've become far more civilized since then. Really? Take a look over at Crimea and tell me that we've become that much more civilized. Tell me that if Putin's army wasn't significantly stronger, that he wouldn't have taken all of the Ukraine and his next target wouldn't be Poland or Lithuania. Please, don't fool yourself. Leave that to the illegal traitor-in-chief at the head seat. He's acting like some kind of a tyrant. <laughs> of course he is, and so are you. The world has turned into a banana republic. And there is not even the pillar of the United States to bring it to a halt. TGI Friday, America, good luck to you because I'll tell you what, I can't tell you when, I can't tell you how. I may be dead, I may be in prison for what I say here before it happens. But I can tell you this, somewhere in the near future, the price that we pay to restore this from a banana republic to a constitutional republic of freedom and liberty is going to be extraordinarily painful. And the longer we wait, the more precarious our chances of survival physical, emotional, spiritual. If you are of the religious mindset and you say to me, well, God's going to come and sit, stop. Tell that to the six million Jews and the six million Poles and other Europeans who said the same thing as they were marched to the ovens. Say that to the 50 million Ukrainians that Stalin starved to death. You don't know God's timetable. Stop touting it as if you do. You've been listening to America's Voice now. If we will not fight for the right when we can easily win without bloodshed, if we will not fight when our victory will be sure and not too costly, we may come to the moment when we will have to fight with all the odds against us and only a precarious chance of survival. The worst case may come yet. We may have to fight when there is no hope of victory because it is better to perish than to live as slaves. The choice is yours, America. You're going to fight when it's still fisticuffs, or you're going to wait until we're using weapons? We'll see you on Monday. Communicate with me by going to mike at americasvoicenow.com.
AmericasVoiceNow.org. That's Mike at AmericasVoiceNow.org.